your research showed certain types of proteins increased cancer. Did it show sugar having any impact on increasing feeding or causing cancer? Well, that's, that's kind of an indirect question. It's an old story uh, going back to the 1930s by uh, Otto Warburg, a German uh, scientist who got a couple of Nobel Prizes, by the way. <laughs> it was a uh, serious fellow. Um, he was showing that, uh, you know, cancer tends to grow in an anaerobic environment without the oxygen. But it still needs energy. It sure enough needs energy, right? Well, it draws on sugar. It draws on sugar to feed itself. So cancer is a kind of feeding itself in this oxygen-free environment, or relatively oxygen-free. You know, taking the sugar, and that sugar is metabolized in, in a way in which oxygen is not required. The first part of the met metabolic cycle. So that that stayed with us. That was a big uh, big deal called the, the Warburg effect. And that kind of hung around. Cancer lives on sugar, you know, that's, and that, that took hold and became the most popular concept. Sugar causes cancer, sugar sustains cancer. Actually, when you look at it a little harder, obviously the story is much bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. Uh, but by the same token, I don't want to stray too far from that idea because uh, consuming refined sugar Sucrose, glucose, fructose, if you will, consuming refined sugar, that does lead to a metabolic disorder in a way that can kind of stimulate, possibly. Uh, disease formation, including cancers, not so good, not so good. But I think the main emphasis for the sugar cancer hypothesis really had to do with Warburg studies back in the 1930s and into the 40s. Great, great biochemistry, very nice. But uh, the, uh, I, I, I remember seeing when I was first getting involved in research back in the late 50s, Marburg was just ending his, his stuff. And I remember his writing a, a rather, rather impassioned letter to the editor to one of the journals, really complaining about that. Why don't they understand this? We've got, you know, the future is this and that. And, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, I understand his enthusiasm for his research, but it went a little bit too far. One final question for you, and that is, why was it important for you to come speak at the Real Truth About Health conference? Because, first off, the words and, and thinking about it, the truth about health, what a wonderful expression. The truth about health. Now we can all argue that we have our own truths. And I'm going to argue there's something more fundamental than our own personal opinions about things. If we just look at the science, just look at the science, see how these work. And I'm talking about looking at observations that are obtained objectively or not done transparently or displayed for the rest of the world to see, especially other professionals, get critique. So I'm talking about, you know, some really good solid facts. That's really it, what's in forms. So when you say truth about health, I'm gonna to, I'm going to suggest, for me at least, that truth goes to really inquiring about what is the scientific fundamentals. And that's, a, that's what served me. I, I, I obviously had to deal with a lot of, uh, you know, issues that I was discovering, so to speak, that I didn't agree with. It ran against my culture, ran against my own life, everything else. I had to deal with that. I had to deal with the pushback from my colleagues as well. Uh, and uh, so I really got to really respect the concept of science. So when you say truth about health, I just want to leave this for a final thought. The truth, let's, let's get down and look at the verifiable, reliable facts, integrated as a whole integrated as a whole. So what I think a conference, if I may sort of get inside of you, the, the heads of you folks that put, who put this together, it, it, the truth about health is lifestyle. So in other words, it's sort of, I think a, a good word. It's, it's a total reformation in a sense of the way we tend to do things. And it is a lifestyle practice. It has to be a lifestyle practice. 
So congratulations on doing that. Well, we, we thank you for that. And we thank you for joining us uh, as you have uh, a few times now. And so we really do appreciate that and all of your time. And with that, we uh, will let you get back to it. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you doing that. Th thank you, Dr. Campbell. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye.